What's up guys, back for another Hawkeye Star Wars video. In this video, we're gonna talk about Acheron. Now, it is kind of a later than normal upload. I actually fell asleep, uh, you know, pet my cat. He, he likes to come in, meow, you know, and he likes to lay down and he falls asleep and then I'm like, you know, I feel bad, so I don't wanna move him. But here we are, better late than never, right? So here we're gonna talk about Acheron. The reason we're talking about Acheron is because a lot of people are kind of doing a the same song of dance that we had with funny Don Hang, and that is the Akron's a little too OP. Now I've seen people talk about it on Twitter and YouTube videos, YouTube comments. I don't really use too much like Instagram and like TikTok, so I couldn't say over on that side, right? But people were talking about how Akron's a little too OP, Akron ruined the meta, yada yada. Like everyone is just focused on Akron. It's like why use anybody else besides obviously the second team, right? Um, now, while that is true, and I do agree, Akron is definitely tier zero, Z tier, S plus, whatever you want to call it, right? She's definitely a notch above the other characters. I feel like people are kind of blowing it out of proportion and making it sound like, you know, if the next character is an Akron tier, why would we summon or... You know, all the other characters, like, who cares? I'll just use Acheron. Or the other characters can't compete. And I don't think that's true. While Akron does out-damage characters like Ratio and Jing Yun, I feel like you can still clear it just fine. Now, the reason behind this is, unfortunately, I do have to pull up a screenshot because I have to do a double take on this video because the same cat that I fell asleep, you know, laying with, decided he wanted to try to knock over a box of stuff, and it would have made a lot of noise, and as you guys know, record late at night, so it was kind of do or die, and when I grabbed him and opened the door and let him out, I completely forgot my train of thought, right? So unfortunately, I can't show you in game. I did go back to the video and take a screenshot. So this is 25 cycles on the newest MOC. The teams I use, let me pull them up right now, are these teams right here, right? Now, oh, well, sorry, not Jinglo, Akron. I was using that example. Anyway, so with the first team and the second team, funny enough, they both choked and left the enemy with like one HP. So I technically lost a cycle. So I could easily one cycle the first one and three cycle the second one, right? And that's the thing. Even if I couldn't, that is still a whole five turns, a whole five turns that I still had on whatever cycle with be with the Akron team or the ratio team. We currently do not have anything in the game where Akron's strength really matters. And to be fair, we really don't have anything in the game where Jinglu and Don Hang's strengths really matter. At least not yet. I think there's like one event that I hadn't cleared, and it's the one where you're like in the lab. I know I mentioned this a lot because I really like the event. Um, I wish I had more time with it, but I just did not have the characters really to, you know, fight it at full strength, right? And that one was really hard, right? And I think Akron's strength and something like that would definitely be warranted of like, oh, dang, why would you use anyone else? But we really haven't had an event that, besides that one, really needs Akron's strength. And to be fair for that event, I think you got like 2,000 credits or something like that. Like the rewards were just like, whatever, who cares? We can't beat it, right? Obviously, people want to clear it because they like beating content, and that's fair, right? But for MOC, which is pretty much the hardest content of the game because... I mean, come on, let's be honest. Pure Fiction, her is the best character for it, and she's free. You can basically, basically max her out for the I think she's E5 through Pure, or not Pure Fiction, through uh, Simulated Universe stuff. So the, a free character clears it, right? Himiko, Stan Brander character, E0, clears it. Um, you know, Pela, debatably free character because she was free in an event you know really good and that one there's a lot of free options in pure fiction and even just standard have the five star character like Ak rick akron and black swan even without dupes or without their light cones still absolutely shred that game mode so i feel like that one's a bit too easy so then we just turn to moc right and the fact that we are in moc you can clear it with four stars just fine with 20 cycles remaining a lot of people still clear it i'm sure with characters such as like don hang arlen you know qq juay su shang sampo right we don't really have a mean and i feel like when people worry about power creep and worry about okay like i said before sam and boot hill and jade all have to be better than akron or what's the point of summoning it's like yeah, if we had game mode where it's like, okay, if you aren't using Akron and the other two top DPSs, you can't clear it, then I'd be like, sure, right? But 
I feel like we haven't evolved enough in Star Rail since the MOC 12 came out. And even after MOC 12, people kind of just like adjusted to it and we're fine, right? With where we're at. I feel like we definitely haven't adjusted to really needing Acheron's DPS skill. And because of that, I feel like it is totally fine. If Boot Hill drops and Acheron's still better, that's fine. If we drop Sam and Sam. Well, okay, to be fair, Sam is kind of a special case because Sam and Firefly are a fan favorite and probably the most hyped character in Star at the moment. So I feel like they probably shouldn't fumble that one. But even so, even if they do, if Akron's better, that's fine. If Jinglu and Don Hang are better than Sam, uh, Jade, and Boot Hill, that's fine too, right? I feel like as long as you aren't getting to tiers like. Well, okay, to be fair, fair with Proven Steelers, I'm sure a lot of people are going to argue, let's close that, against uh, some of these placings. But as long as you're not dropping and Zele is better than you, I feel like that's fine, right? Now, I know people are going to be like, oh, Zele is so good, right? Well, she's, she's the first character to come out, you know? Like, I feel like we at least have to respect the player's money and, you know, I don't want to say IQ or anything, but like, you want if you're summoning for a character and they for some reason decide to make them like Yanqing tier i feel like that's a little disrespectful right but as long as we're getting characters who are around here or when tier lists change and like ratio goes down to here doing what goes down to here as long as the newer characters are staying within like the top five dps's i feel like that's totally fine let me know in the comments what you think about that right but i feel like that's completely fine and people are just saying, oh, you know, the whole Akron thing. There's like Doom posting, I believe, is the right word for that. I don't really use that word too often, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means about the whole thing. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think that it's totally viable and you think Akron like, is too much of a meta jump. Uh, me personally, I feel like the same thing happened with Don Hang and everyone was freaking out about him. And lo and behold, it was completely fine. To be fair though, Jing Lu did come out uh, and people were like, oh, well, she's better than him. So we were absolutely right. But I feel like that wouldn't have stopped people for summoning for someone like Ratio, right? Or summoning for someone such as like Black Swan. Black Swan's a special case, I guess. I feel like the dot team when it comes to DPSs are a bit weird because the top team is so strong. But when it comes to top DPSs, I feel like nobody talks about Kafka and Black Swan because they're kind of their own thing. Especially uh, pulling up the period of tier list again, you know, they're kind of in their own side thing. I feel like when we come to top DPSs, people just talk about Akron, Don Hang, Jing Lu, Ratio, and then one of these uh, guys right here, mostly Blades and Zele, I see people talk about, but a lot of people kind of just skim over these guys. So it's a little weird to include them, even though I do think Kafka is a great DPS, but enough of uh, the Kafka, uh, you know, hype over here. I mean, that's pretty much all I really want to talk about, honestly. I feel like at this point, we're just regurgitating things I've already said. TLDR, I think Akron being OP is fine. I think it's not nearly as big as a gap in the game as people think. You know, she could be doing double, triple damage as other characters, but until that damage is warranted, it's sort of just wasted in a sense of if an enemy has 10 HP and you're doing 100 damage and, you know, 50% of the game is doing 11 damage, it's like, okay, well, that character is doing 100 damage to that one enemy, but half the game can also instantly kill that enemy. So, like, you know, that's cool, but they're really not doing too much, right? I feel like that's pretty much where we're at with Akron. Of course, new game mode comes out and we shall see i'll definitely be testing the hell out of it hopefully it's not too easy or too difficult or restricting of a game mode kind of like how pure fiction you really can't use single target characters too much and with moc aoe characters struggle a bit of course there's a lot of two enemies now but uh that could happen but other than that that's pretty much gonna be it for the video let me know what your thoughts about akron are in the comments and of course i'll catch y'all in the next star video